Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do a tour of SeaWorld in uh, Universal Orlando. Uh, and I think this park is a bit of a kind of hidden gem. I think uh, in recent years uh, they've probably got a lot of flack for all of the uh, animal uh, rights stuff. Um, so they've kind of changed their focus a little bit as far as I can tell and they've actually added some really good coasters in this park and uh, quite a few rides. So today's tour is going to be um, primarily about the rides. It's not going to be about the uh, the animal shows. Um, so we're just going to walk around uh, SeaWorld now, give you a bit of a tour of the uh, um, the rides, uh, talk a little bit about their uh, quick queue that they have here, which is similar to uh, Universal's uh, Express Pass. If you want to see a video on Universal, just click up here. Um, and um, yeah, let's go to SeaWorld. We're going to SeaWorld. Firstly, apologies, I haven't bought my little wind muffler thing. Uh, so the audio is probably not going to be great as we walk around here. Hopefully it's okay. I'll try to put noise cancelling on. Uh, just a quick note on the car park. So uh, we've actually got a ticket, which is a, a kind of a combination ticket for Bush Gardens, SeaWorld and Aquatica. Uh, and with that ticket, we actually get free parking. Now, this is a really good benefit because it costs $30 a day to park in this car park. And what I think it does is it kind of opens it up so you can just come here in the evenings if you want to come. Um, you can go to the water park more times. You don't have to worry about keep paying for parking every time you come in here. One of the great things about this park is it never really gets that busy. Uh, we came here last Monday and uh, it's middle of August and um, it was so quiet. On some of the rides, we were the only people on the rides. Uh, for uh, quite a few of the rides, we were just getting off and just getting straight back on again. Um, today is actually a bit busier than what it was uh, last Monday. Even though it's busier, it's still not that busy. You can get straight on the rides. Today we've actually got Quick Queue, um, which is uh, SeaWorld's version of uh, express pass um, but I'm not sure we really needed it to be honest it's uh, uh, most of the queues are very very short a little tip when you come here if the queue is long a lot of people start queuing over there where it says park entrance uh, when the queue is long you can actually just walk around here to the right and the queue is a lot shorter and you get in there a lot quicker all right I just want to give you a, a, an idea of how quiet this park is we actually it opened at 10 today it's now 10 to 1 um, opened at 10. We came in here at 10. We've been on every ride at least twice um, and then we've gone out of the park um, and we've got a subway. We've eaten the subway and we're back. That's how um, uh, unbusy this park is um, and that's a good point on the uh, food. If you're happy to do that um, and you don't want to pay the prices in here, I don't because I'm a cheapskate, um, we basically just drove in, uh, came to the park for a couple of hours, drove back out to the subway that's just over the road drove back into the car park, parked in our same space again, and we walked back into the park. So when you first come into this park, this is, this is quite an important tip. They don't open the whole park when the park opens. So sometimes the park opens at nine in the, in the middle of the summer holidays. In this week in August, which is like the 20th of August when all the American school kids have gone back, they start opening it at 10 a.m. Now, they don't open the whole park. They actually only open two coasters to start with, uh, and that is Manta and Kraken. Uh, the, the coasters in the other part of the park, like the new Skyride one and the, the Montu, they don't actually open until an hour after the park is open. So a lot of people come in here, they go on these two rides and then they run to go to the other one and then there's a guy stood there and there's a gate that's shut and you can't actually go in or go on any of it. Uh, so it's a bit frustrating. And, that, and this is the case with all of SeaWorld's parks. So Bush Gardens, Aqu well not, not Aquatica, but SeaWorld and Bush Gardens. They just open the park and they don't open all the rides and it's quite frustrating actually. So this ride on the right here, and yeah, when you're coming in, the first ride you want to go on is Manta. Uh, and this ride's pretty cool because you basically, you start like this and then you lie horizontal. Uh, and, um, and it's like you're flying. This is when you get in the Manta queue. So if you've got um, normal tickets, this is where you get in the queue on the right here. The weird thing with these uh, SeaWorld Park is if you've bought the quick queue, they haven't quite nailed it like they do at Universal. Um, and uh, for, for the quick queue here, you basically, for most of the rides, you go in the exit uh, and you walk, you end up walking past people who are exiting the ride and then you walk up there and you get on. It's pretty disorganized. Most of the time, they're not even checking your tickets that you've got quick queue. Um, we've been here today. I think we had it checked on one of the rides. Uh, even the, the new ride, that's uh, the one where you actually only get one go on uh, quick queue tickets, which is the uh, Sky Ride one. No one checked our quick queue, so we can just go on it as many times as we want and skip the lines. One of the things with quick queue at this park, though, is it's a lot cheaper than the Orlando Express Pass. Uh, I think this cost me 
$30 today to get a uh, quick queue pass for the day um, compared to say um, Universal which is $150 for one day. One other thing with the Manta is um, it's quite a good ride, you're kind of horizontal, you come around. One problem with it is, is the amount of time it takes them to load and unload riders. Um, and when you come around and finish your ride, you're basically in this horizontal position for quite a long time. Um, and if you're what, someone who suffers a bit from like claustrophobia or you feel trapped and things, this, this is probably the worst ride for that in my opinion, because you're sat there for quite a long time in a horizontal position, proper strapped in. Um, so if that bothers you, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but if that kind of thing bothers you, you might want to uh, reconsider going on that ride. Um, if you're one of these people who likes to queue for the front of rides, uh, there's really no value in doing it on that ride because every seat pretty much has a front of the, um, the queue um, ride position um, because basically you're, uh, you're, you're horizontal, you're basically flying uh, and um, it doesn't make any difference which row you're in, you get the same view. Alright, so the next uh, ride on the uh, left here is um, one of these log flume uh, rides, I think it's called Journey to Atlantis. Uh, it's another one of these um, water rides that you get absolutely soaked on. Um, so if you're happy to get soaked, it's a good one to go on. If you watch my review of the Universal Park, um, I think the one in Universal is a bit better. And certainly the one in Universal, you get a lot more wet than they're getting on this one. So this next ride we're going to uh, look at here is called Kraken. It's got an old ride, but it's really good. Um, it's like an old school uh, kind of coaster. Um, what I would say with this ride is that um, there's hardly ever anyone on it. We came in here the other day, we're the only people on the ride um, and we just go back around and just get back on again. Uh, so it's a good ride and it's not got a long queue. I think you just see, just in general, if you've watched my um, Universal video, you'll see that just this park in general, there's hardly anyone here in comparison to what you see at Universal. You can see this ride here, there's no one queuing up for it. And you can basically just walk up there and get on it. Um, there is a quick queue for this ride, which involves you basically walking uh, up the uh, exit. But at the moment, you're better off just going um, on the, uh, the normal queue. And also, if you want to go on the front or back rows, which we quite often do because it tends to be uh, the best, best position for the rides, um, the quick queue line doesn't let you go on them unless it's empty. So if you want to go on the front or the back, uh, you've got to go up the normal queue. Right, there's something else I learned today, and uh, it just goes to show the value of uh, if you just stand and chat to people in queues. Um, I actually learned if you've got an illness, like if you're, say, like a type 1 diabetic or something like that, you can actually get free express passes at these parks. Um, uh, certainly at SeaWorld, you can get a free express pass, uh, and that includes um, the, uh, the, the person who obviously has the illness plus their family, um, which is a really good benefit, uh, especially if you're. Um, say you're a type 1 diabetic, um, it kind of makes sense because you can't queue in a line for an hour if you need to get food. So you actually just get the express pass. So that's quite a good tip if you've got one of those kind of uh, illnesses that's probably not an obvious illness um, or an ov obvious disability. You can contact the park and I think there's details of it online um, and you can, um, you can get free express passes for the day or free quick queue. Right, this area here is like Antarctica. This was, uh, a few years ago, super, super popular. Um, now, there's four people in the queue. <laughs> um, it's just, just mental. It feels like this area's sort of died a death a bit, but this was super popular. And it's actually quite a good ride for younger kids because um, you get taken around this kind of ice world and at the end you see real penguins. Um, it's actually, um, it's a low impact ride, but for little kids, it's a brilliant ride. Um, but as you can see, I mean, this is the normal, we're in the middle of August, one of the busiest times. And you can see here where you normally snake around all these queues. And there's just no one here. And I think a lot of people miss out SeaWorld as a park because they just think, oh, it's all about animal shows. There's some good rides here and you don't have to queue for them. If you compare this to a Disney park or a Universal park, absolute mayhem there at the moment. If I look at the queue app for Universal now, it'll be minimum hour, 45 minutes to get on rides. Here you can just casually just go on stuff, get off, go back on it again if you want. And it's just a lot more relaxed experience when you come to SeaWorld. So now turning back, we're gonna to go to the other part of the park that doesn't open until one hour after um, the park opens. The other thing that is quite good at this park is um, if you come here with young kids, 
every ride and every show as stroller parking outside or buggy parking. Um, and they really do cater well for people who have got um, buggies here. And you just kind of just leave your buggy in a spot and then uh, collect it when you get back out the show or you get back off the ride. Right, yeah, so there's a, um, a park map here and I say it's not really that great because it doesn't show the whole park. So, um, but yeah, you can see here, this is basically where we are here. And uh, we've just seen the, uh, the log flume, the journey to Atlantis, the Kraken that we just saw as well. Um, and then we are about to go over, and this is, um, this is um, Manta, the first one, the horizontal one. Um, and they don't actually have on the map the new bit that we're actually about to go to. I think it's like over here somewhere. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, <laughs> but um, yeah, they need to update their maps. So, kind of a food and drink update uh, pricing wise for you. Um, I think in this park, the uh, food is slightly cheaper than uh, Universal. If you, if you watch the video when we were there, drinks are more expensive. Uh, so to get two Cokes in here, um, uh, in, all that, in, in Universal, it was $9.99 uh, for two Cokes, which is still bloody expensive. Um, but here it is uh, $13.30, uh, thir sorry. Here it is $13.40 for two Cokes, which is just, I think it's unreasonable really. And, and it's not like it's just Coke, it's uh, also bottles of water. Um, they're like two, two bottles of water for $8.50. And I just think, I just think they're taking the mick a bit really with the, uh, the price of drinks here. They do have this kind of a, a souvenir cup and you get um, refills throughout the day. I think the refills then cost uh, 99 cents uh, for each refill and you get them in these kind of like refill stations here um, so that might be good value for you especially if you can share it between a family um, but I would say it's still uh, still an expensive place to drink this one of the things that you can do in American parks which I don't think you can do in English parks you can buy beer um, so you can walk around with um, bottles of beer but you see there a bottle of beer is $12 plus tax so that's going to be an expensive day out if you want to come here and drink beer I wouldn't actually advise it because you're going to get so dehydrated while you're here uh, and drinking beer is probably not the greatest idea. The, uh, the irony is that this woman over here has just told us to make sure we drink plenty of water today. Um, yeah, I'm sure they want us to drink plenty of water when it's costing $5 a bottle. Um, what we're going to do is um, walk around here now. There's two ways you can go. You can go right, which takes you to this new pipeline ride. That's where we're going to go first. Or you can go left, which takes you over to the other part of the park, which is um, uh, Montu, which is a, a brilliant ride. We'll come on to that. So to get to this pipeline ride, you have to come down this uh, ramp here. It's not always obvious. And when the park, is, when this part of the park is, park is closed, like in the first hour of the park opening, sometimes you'll get a lot of people gathering here at about 10 to the hour. Um, and then they try to run for this uh, pipeline uh, ride because it's a brand new ride uh, and it's probably the most popular ride here. Um, in terms of the actual ride itself, it's pretty good because it's kind of unique because you're stood up uh, and it's probably the only ride that I've seen in uh, Orlando where you're actually stood up on a coaster. Um, what I would say is it's an okay ride. It's not particularly fast um, and it's not long enough in my view, especially if you queue for a long time. It's not a particularly long ride. Um, and what I would say is for the men out there, we've decided to call this the Nutcracker 
uh, because basically the floor falls beneath you and then the floor comes back in and lifts you up again and uh, it could give you a little bit of pain. Um, just before we get there, over on the left, they've got this huge stadium area here, which they probably do shows from. I've been here multiple times over the years. I've never seen a show being put on at that stage. I'm sure at some point they do do it. It's an impressive stadium, stadium really, but never seems to get used. Um, so, a bit odd really. This is where the rope is behind, rope normally is here. They open that rope and then everyone runs down here to get on this um, uh, pipeline ride. What I would say is, even, even with the queue when it's long here, it's nowhere near the queue lengths that you get at Universal or Disney. Um, this would be classed as a short queue at Disney, but it's actually the longest queue that you get at this park. So the most popular ride in the park, um, middle of the day, about five minute wait. Uh, so that gives you an idea of what it's like at SeaWorld in terms of uh, queue times. Yeah, so that, uh, that video we just did there, that was the whole ride. So it lasts, I reckon it probably only lasts about 30 seconds or so, for maybe 45 seconds, uh, and then it's over. So if the queue is long, it's quite a long time to wait for such a short ride. The other thing with this park, if you compare it to say Universal, you can't walk around it in one giant loop. Uh, you, you do reach dead ends. So that is the end of the park there, and then you have to walk back on yourself again uh, to get to the uh, to get to the rest of the park. The thing on the right here, this is like giant tower thing, and that, that blue thing on the top actually spins round and the, um, uh, the tower thing comes down. I think you can go on it, but again, this is one of those things that's just been here forever and I've never really seen, well, I used to see it going up and down, but now I don't even see it moving. I don't think, it, I don't know if it's just not working anymore, but um, yeah. Seems a bit of a waste. I think it's just really a very expensive um, flagpole. Similar to Universal, million gift shops everywhere. Um, so, as I said before, if you've got young kids, you're going to have a job trying to keep them out of all these uh, gift shops. Right, so we've um, been on the uh, pipeline. Uh, now we're going to walk back the way we came, straight back across, and we're going to walk over to uh, Montu. Right, the whole park is um, surrounded by this giant lake uh, and you've actually got over here these kind of pelican boat things um, which you can hire. They're basically pedalos um, and you have to pay to hire those. They're not included in the, uh, in the park fee but on a day like this when it's this hot I don't know why you would want to get in one of those and start pedalling. It's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be pretty brutal. Right, we're just going to go in here, have a quick look at the food prices. Right, food prices, as I said, they're not too bad compared to um, Universal. It's basically $18 for a bacon burger with fries, uh, and then you're going to have to buy a drink with that as well. Um, but um, you can also get loaded fries, and weirdly, they are $19. Um, so more than a burger and fries, uh, which is um, kind of strange. So this next area that we're coming up on here, uh, it's not actually a ride, but um, it's a shark encounter. Um, so you can walk through there um, and see some uh, see some real sharks. It's uh, it's pretty cool.
Right, so that's the shark encounter done. Um, I realised I said to you today we were only going to do roller coasters, um, but I just needed to get in there. It's so hot today. It's quite a good thing just to walk through there and cool off. Um, but um, back to the coasters now. Apologies, won't happen again. Right, next up we've got Montu. Uh, this is a classic. It's a really, really good ride. It's one of my favourite rides. You basically, when you go on this ride, you've got nothing that comes over your arms. You've got this one small thing that goes over your lap. Uh, and um, the goal is, the first time you ever go on it, um, the first time you ever go on it, you must try and go on it and keep your hands up all the way around. And see if you can keep them up all the way. Right, this is the seat, and it comes back down, and that's it. That's all you've got on you. Nothing over your arms. This is quite cool. You can actually dine with the orcas. Um, and you can sit in here and eat next to a whale. Not sure they're actually gonna let us in here. Gonna give it a quick try, but I've just seen a whale poke his head up. So yeah, you can actually come in here and eat next to this uh, pool uh, and watch the whale go, go around. Some people have different views on that. Some people won't very, be very happy about the fact that they're keeping those whales in uh, captivity. Um, I'm sure they have their reasons for it and some people will agree with it, some people won't. Uh, they've also got one of these uh, Congo rapid rides like they've got at um, Universal. Um, if you've been to UK theme parks where they've got these, these are rides where you get proper soaked. Right, so this is the last coaster of the day. It's called the uh, Icebreaker. Um, we've actually been over it twice already and it's been broken both times, uh, but this time it's actually open, so we gave it a go. It's actually not a bad ride. Uh, if you don't like rides where you um, go backwards, um, this probably isn't the one for you. Also, if you're slightly larger, it's quite hard to get on and off of this ride, so just watch that. As you can see, it kind of goes up and back, up and back. Let's see? All right, so that concludes the uh, review of the uh, SeaWorld uh, coasters and rides. Um, what I would say about SeaWorld, uh, extremely chill day out. If you want to go here and just experience the coasters and get to go on them multiple times, it's a great park for that. It's actually got some really good coasters on it and um, you're going to spend a lot less time queuing than you do at Universal. 
Um, just to give uh, a bit of context around that, this park opened at 10 o'clock today. Uh, we've been on, there's two of us, uh, we've been on uh, each ride at least twice, some of them more than twice. We've driven out of the park, we've gone over to the nearest subway, we've had lunch, we've come back again, got back in the car park, walked in the park, we've done a full uh, video tour of the entire park, uh, and it's now uh, 2.30, so that gives you an idea of how quick you can get around this park. Um, I will add that we're trying to do this in the most efficient way. I've been to SeaWorld multiple times before, so um, I'm not here to just enjoy every single show and every everything about the park, but obviously if you do, you can take it a bit slower, and you don't need to worry so much in this park because um, it, it's not as busy. So um, it's quite a nice day. As I said at the beginning, it's a bit of a hidden gem. Um, it's a bit more chill than Universal, and um, yeah, that concludes the review of SeaWorld. Thanks for listening. Oh, oh, oh. Please, please, please. Right, next up we've got Montu. Uh, this is a classic, really, really good ride. It's one of my favourite rides. 